Hey guys, this is the first video on the channel Optometry for You and we will be discussing the various ocular conditions on this channel and along with other stuffs. The first condition for this week is retinal detachment. So we will be discussing about the condition, the classification, pathophysiology, science, risk factor, diagnostic procedure as well as the management. So retinal detachment is a condition which occurs due to the subretinal fluid that accumulates between the neurosensory retina and the retinal pigmented epithelium layer. It is usually classified as a regmatogenous RD, tractional RD and the exudative retinal detachment. These are the photos that are presented here. The first one is regmatogenous RD, the second one is exudative RD and the third one is tractional RD. So regmatogenous RD, it occurs secondary to the full thickness effect in the sensory retina which permits the fluid derived from the vitreous to gain the access in the subretinal space. Tractional RD occurs due to the neurosensory retina gets pulled away from the RPE layer and exudative RD usually occurs due to the passage of the fluid from the choroid into the space between RPE and the neurosensory retina. So let's discuss about the anatomy. So the retinal detachment is the separation of the neurosensory retina from the underlying RPE layer. These two layers are derived from the neuroectoderm that lines the optic vesicle during embryogenesis. As the optic vesicle invaginates to form the optic cup, the two layers come in opposition. The inner layer differentiates in neurosensory retina and outer into RPE. There is no real anatomical junction that is present. Therefore, the forces of the attachment of neurosensory retina and RPE are weak and there are the chances of retinal detachment that increases in these cases. Let's discuss the pathophysiology. The retinal pigmented epithelium is able to maintain the adhesion with the overlying neurosensory retina through a variety of mechanisms. Retinal detachment occurs when the subretinal fluid accumulates between the neurosensory retina and the retinal pigmented epithelium. It usually occurs in the three way. One mechanism is the occurrence of a break, the another one is proliferative membrane and the third one is accumulation of subretinal fluid. So re recommendations RD usually show the sign of RAPD, low IOP and the tobacco dust and there is also a presence of the vitreous blood and retinal breaks and the symptoms are as follows tractional rd usually occurs where there is an rd has a concave configuration retinal mobility is severely reduced the subretinal fluid is shallow and there is a high elevation of retina b scan b scan shows an incomplete posterior vitreous Exudative RD has a convex configuration. The detached retina is very mobile and exhibits the phenomenon of the shifting of fluid. And there are leopard spots that can be seen in this condition. The predisposing degenerations are as follows. Degenerative retinosciasis, uvula effusion, WOP, choroidal mass, CMV retinitis. The risk factors are RD in other eye, aphakia, pseudophakia, high myopic, one-eyed patient, strong family history and it can be also in the systemic diseases like Marfan syndrome, Stickler syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos, aging and long-standing diabetes and hypertension. The diagnostic procedures are IDO, 20D, 28D, 40D and it can be also seen with the help of the 60D, 90D, B-scan, 3-mirror contact lenses. The management is usually done with the help of lasering, that is laser retinopexy, cryoretinopexy, pneumatic retinopexy and it can be also managed with the help of the scleral buckling procedure. Thanks for watching and you can just like subscribe and if you have any doubts you can mail me on the email id given thank you please don't forget to like the video subscribe the video and share it with your other colleagues thank you